Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum. We are here today at SHOT Show 2025 with Steven, who is Director of Product Management for Primary Arms. Now, Primary Arms has just released their HTX-1 uh, red dot optic. I had a whole bunch of people uh, ask us to, ask me to take a close look at it, and I think there's a really interesting story here because this is an optic that you developed and manufactured completely in the US. We did, we did. And there is not just the design and kind of making it a thing was a challenge, but just figuring out how to do it in the United States and developing that supply chain, which didn't exist before this got. So on the one side, you've got what appears to be a really cool technical red dot design. You've got a well thought out chassis system still uses plates, but it's compatible with basically all of the major optics, mounting configurations, good power management, like it does all the good red dot things, which is cool. But to me, what's really interesting about this that I think most people aren't going to appreciate is the backstory on actually producing something like this, the, the supply chain logistics in the US. Can you tell us about some of the challenges involved in actually doing that? Yeah, so I mean, there's there's machine shops in the U.S. that can cut aluminum, they can cut steel, we can make screws, we can make all those things. But there are components in here that really don't apply across any other industry. There are manufacturing processes that only apply to making enclosed reflex dots that are this big. And since this is the only one, they just didn't exist at all. So one of the biggest challenges we had was the front lens in there. Um, there wasn't the technology, there wasn't the skill set to be able to make that in the U.S. So once we found a glass partner that would um, kind of help us in the development of the lens, we had to learn together with them. Like, how are we going to make this? What machining do we need to do? What processes do we need to use? Because until this existed, nothing else was out there like it. We couldn't call 1-800-GLASS and like, I just need this lens cut to this spec and they just kick it out. Um, and not only the grinding and cutting of that glass, but the coatings that we're using as well. So it's optically correct. You don't get any weird hues or tints, but we're still able to reflect the reticle that's in there with good efficiency so we can maintain that battery life. Um, all of it had to be learned and developed kind of as a team with you know experts in glass and optics, as well as our experts and our in-house engineers that know about the rigors that you know these pistol mounted reflexes go through and what this system has to stand up to. So what about circuitry, boards? There are, like everyone knows most high-end computer chips are not made in the US, they're made in Taiwan. But I don't know, that maybe this doesn't require chips that are that, like, that high-end, you're not doing AI processing on a red dot. What was involved in the, the circuitry? So, I mean, if we could throw AI into this thing and you could just tell it what you wanted to do, that would be pretty cool. Everybody could figure it out for you, maybe that'll be the next step, but yeah, I mean, even the, the PCBs that are in there, the, the circuitry and the components, everything in this thing is US made. There's one part of one thing that isn't US made and that's the actual crystal that the emitter diode is made out of. Um, and with emitter diodes, it's not, you don't cut glass for it, it's not plastic, it's not anything like that. You actually have to grow the crystal. There's two places in the world that do that. One place is in China, the other one's in Germany. So we're actually growing the crystal for the emitter diode in Germany. Then we're bringing it here to the States and then we're potting and soldering and doing all the work to make it that final emitter die here in the US. So every component, every screw, uh, the lenses, everything in here, the anodizing, the material, the aluminum that we're cutting it out of, everything's US. So there is absolutely a significant cost uh, challenge in doing so. You're not going to be able to make that for the same price in the US that you could in China. Absolutely. What is, what's your price and how, how does that, like, how much of an impact does the US manufacturer have on the final price? So that the US manufacturing component definitely speaks a lot to what that final price is going to be. So I mean there's there's a single component in this optic that costs more than a lot of our foreign made optics as a whole. So, I believe that. Uh, you're not going to find that you know U.S. made fully enclosed dot for 149. It's just not going to happen. So um, we've got the Vulcan variant of this. We're on release. We have two variants starting off. One's the Vulcan. So it's got the ACSS Vulcan reticle, that big 250 MOA outer circle. What's a 240 MOA in the um, HTX here with a 3 MOA center aiming point? That one's the MSRP on it, 749. Um, the dot only variant, which is a 4 MOA dot, and that's it, no circle. 
the MSRP is six ninety nine. But of course, street price is going to be lower than that. Um, that's just our MSRP form. Okay, and so why? Why deliberately make it more expensive by making it in the U.S.? What's the? There's an upside, I'm sure. What is that? The upside is we can control everything. We can control quality of materials. We can control quality of the machining. We can control the glass, the coatings, everything. And it also makes it conform to um, Trade Act compliance. So we actually have a lot of um, larger federal agencies, uh, military customers that are extremely interested in this. And without being Trade Act compliant, um, if we were to make this overseas in China or the Philippines or something like that, it would be ineligible for contract. Um, so by doing that, you know, we can provide a system that we believe is superior to pretty much everything else out there that the warfighters in the U.S. can purchase and they can bring in. But it's also the same technology that anybody can go buy. It's the same quality, the same testing standards, the same everything. So anybody can go have what we believe is the best enclosed reflex for anybody's pistol on the market. Okay. It's that U.S. government contracting that I expected you were going to bring up. And that wasn't, that wasn't the initial intent in the beginning either. Once we started building this, we just wanted to make something really cool. And uh, we had pocket samples of this at SHOT Show for the last two years in different prototype variants. And uh, we showed it to one group in particular, and they're like, that that changes the way people will look at reflex sites. So we thought, oh, you know, hey, that's pretty cool. We, or at least we're heading down the right track, and we got a little bit of confirmation with that. And since then, like the rumor mill, especially on the Fed side, it, hey, have you seen this new thing from these guys? Go talk to this dude. And it's, uh, it's blown up. So we've been excited. How long have you spent working on this? This has been a project for just over three years. Three years. So we actually moved into a new facility in Houston, Texas about three years ago, specifically to tool up and get ready to produce these. Um, the clean rooms that we've been setting up, the manufacturing people that we've been bringing in, assembly people we've been bringing in has all been tooling up for this and that's yeah over the last three years so there's a the company has put a huge investment into this like there's a i don't want to say a big gamble but there's a lot on the line setting up a whole manufacturing facility like that it's significant yeah i'm pretty sure kind of the running joke around the system is probably the first two years we're not going to make a dime off of these things because just setting all that up to begin with before you actually start making the product there's a significant financial and time commitment to doing something like that. Absolutely. I don't want to put you on the spot to answer the question, but something that I see a lot are people complaining about the lack of U.S. made red dots and, you know, oh, I don't want to buy it from China, but maybe not recognizing or not thinking about the difference in cost. And so I will be very curious to see what the, the individual non-agency, the civilian, like the enthusiast sales for this are. Obviously, you don't know yet because you're just releasing it. And yep. I mean, the, the market will definitely tell us. I can tell you the feedback that we've had since the initial announcement uh, about a week ago has been hugely positive. Um, and, you know, we're right aligned with the other premium pistol reflexes that are out there from a lot of our um, kind of friends in the industry. They've, there's a lot of great dots out there that sit in this, you know, six to $700 price point. Um, that are extremely popular with consumers as well as with military. So, um, you know, sitting right in alignment with those, we think it'll be received well. And so far, we're anticipating with the, the feedback that we've got, they're going to be they're going to be extremely popular on both the Fed and the consumer side. Very nice. Well, I know we've been pretty light on the technical side of that, but I think a lot of people are going to be covering like the information on the technical specs and the, the mounting and the reticles. I think are pretty reasonably available. I thought it'd be really interesting to talk to you guys about what actually went into the manufacturing process. Yeah, it's a uh, it's been a challenge every step of the way, but being able to get it figured out, the uh, the team we have there in Houston, it's a it's a small ish group, but they're all extremely dedicated and uh, really kind of passionate about what we make and why we make it. So they've been able to do things that you know you wouldn't find anywhere else. So we're excited. Very nice. Well, thank you very much. Uh, best of luck to you guys. Yeah, thank you. It looks pretty darn cool. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for watching.